Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, children. Happy Sabbath, children. How many of you remember what we learned about last Sabbath? Lily? The law of God. The law of God. And who told the story? Josiah and Teacher Felice. Josiah and Teacher Felice. Thank you very much. This Sabbath, church, the story will be told by Credrol B, courtesy of Teacher James. Teacher James, Teacher Sharon, and Skylar. Come, Skylar. So, Today is a continuation of last Sabbath, which was a fundamental belief number 19. Say number 19. Number 19, number 19 which is the law of God. So before we start, I'll invite Skylar to pray. Skylar, please pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a good day. And thank you for the story. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Skylar. So, children... I would like us to turn to our Bibles, to the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Psalms 19, verse 7. Teacher James, do you want to read for us? And it says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Children, do you know about a man called... Samson. Skylar, do you know about Samson? What, is, what was about Samson? What about him? He was very strong. Very loudly. Strong. He was strong. Samson was big and who else do we know is strong? Who else do you know who's strong? The Goliath. Goliath. Who else? A boy. A boy. Yeah, boys are strong. Daddy. Yes, I was waiting for you to say daddy. Daddy is a strong. Your daddy is strong. Who else is strong? Goliath. Goliath. Guys, these kids are three. And they know Goliath and their daddies are strong. <laughs> so, we will sing. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing. My God cannot do for you. I can't hear you, church. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars and the the stars are his handiwork too. Let's teach the church credit roll B. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. So, Teacher James, please tell us about the strongest man called Samson and what God did for the strongest man. Ah, thank you. Good morning again, children. Good morning, parents. Now, there's something which Teacher Sharon did not say. Samson was the strongest man and he was also the weakest man. It's a paradox. It's, a par it's called a paradox. Two sides of a coin. So, Samson was strong. When was he strong? When he obeyed God. And remember what we've read in uh, Psalms 19 verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. So, the law guides us to live well. Like at home, you have rules. Do we have rules at home, children? And when you obey the rules, what happens? There are no tears. But if you, don't, if you disobey, Sometimes it's boko, yeah? So, um, the law of God helps us to be good friends with God. And God gave rules to the children of Israel. When Samson was born, you remember Samson's mommy was not able to give birth. And an angel came to talk to Samson's mommy. 
And the angel told Samson's mommy something and daddy something. They are called the Nazarite vows. Is there any parent here who knows one of the vows which Samson was to follow? Any parent? They were not to cut their hair. He was not meant to cut his hair. So if he didn't cut his hair, how did his hair look? Was it shaggy? Was it long? We believe it was long. We don't know. Maybe it was shaggy. But it was long hair. He had long hair. The other vows he was to do, he was not meant to drink what? Wine. What else was he not meant to do? To? Not to touch dead bodies. Ah, not to touch dead bodies or anything that was unclean. As long as Samson followed those rules, he would be good friends with God. Do you remember last week we did the Ten Commandments, which tells us what to do and what not to do. As long as you do them, you're friends with God. And following God's rules, it demonstrates our friendship and our trust in God. But did Samson always follow the rules of God? No. So the rules also show us what is right from wrong. Now when Samson grew up, he wanted to get, he saw a girl somewhere. And he told his parents he wants to get married. But the girl he went and saw was from the enemies of Israel. What were the enemies called? What were the enemies called, parents? Philistines. They used to fight a lot. And what God had told them is that they should never, ever, ever marry from the Philistines. So that is one rule of God that Samson broke. And when he broke it, what happened? He went and then ultimately he suffered. Yeah? And when he realized that he had suffered, what did he do? What did he do at the end? He apologized. Yeah? He told God, I am sorry. So God's rules help us to recognize what is good from what is bad. If there was no rules, Samson could have married anybody. Yeah? That's what God's rules do. Now, you remember I've said at the end, Samson got into a big problem. Who knows what problem he got into? Anybody? Any parents? What rule did uh, Samson break? He let his hair be cut. Yes, he's let his hair be cut. Remember the first rule which God said is his hair should never be cut. And the second thing he broke, he went and married from the Philly, Philistines. Now the Philistines, I forgot to tell you. You remember you said Samson was very strong. So Samson, every time they would be fighting with the Philistines, he would go and beat all of the Philistines. So they are always looking for a way to bring him down. And because sometimes Samson was disobedient, they found a way. And they cut his hair. And immediately they cut his hair. What happened? His strength went. And he became very weak. So the bad people caught him. And they went around showing him to everybody. Saying, look, the person who God was using, look, he has no strength. So the law of God also points us to salvation. Because despite of Samson's mistakes, Samson made many mistakes. But still, God gives us an opportunity to confess. And when we confess, what does he do? He forgives us. Did Samson confess? But when did he confess? He confessed when he was put in the temple. He was put in the temple and he was put between two pillars. And he prayed to God and said, God, please, please forgive me. And and now that I'm here, give me strength one more time. One more time so that I can destroy all of these Philistines. And what did God do? He gave him strength. Imagine this whole church. The building was bigger than this church. It was a very big building. And God gave Samson enough strength that he pushed and pushed and pushed on the pillars and the pillars broke. And the whole building came tumbling down. So that is how salvation came upon Samson. And also the law of God shows us about dependence on God. Yeah? Whenever we have big problems. Are we ever scared children? Are we ever scared What are we scared of? Any child, what are we scared of? We are scared of snakes. Uh Some people are scared of snakes. Somebody else? We are scared of spiders. Spiders. Uh What else are we scared of? We are scared of, of... Monsters. Monsters. Wow, we're scared of scary things. Okay. 
But now, whenever we are scared, we can always depend on God. So when you are scared, you pray, dear Jesus, please help me to, not to be scared of. Yes, Kyla, you're scared of something. You have to open the door and leave the lights open. Okay, to leave the door open when you're going to sleep. Yes, that is why we pray for God to give us courage so that we are not scared. No. So it teaches us that we can always trust in God. When Samson depended on God, God always gave him strength. You remember there is a time when Samson was attacked by a lion. Somebody said they are scared of spiders. Now imagine now a lion attacked Samson. And Samson depended on God. And what did Samson do to the lion? He beat it. And he, he beat it. <laughs> and he destroyed it. Yeah? So whenever we depend on God, he gives us strength. Even at the end, Samson depended on God to give him strength one more time. And he was able to destroy the enemies. So we'll sing one more song about Jesus being with us in the vessel. We'll sing with Jesus in the vessel. With Jesus in the vessel, I can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. With Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. As we go sailing home. Sailing, sailing home. Sailing, sailing home. With Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. As we go sailing home. Thank you very much, Teacher James, and thank you, Cadrol B. We look forward to next Sabbath to hear what next? To hear what? But before we go, we are going to pray, and I will ask Mama Azizi to pray for us. Let's pray. Mighty Father, we thank you so much for this Sabbath day. We thank you for the children's story that we have listened to today, Lord. We pray that you may bless us for the remaining part, parts of the programs, and we pray that you may continue walking with us in this Christian journey, O oh Lord. Thank you for your love and your mercies that are new unto us every morning, and may your will be done in our lives. We commit the speaker, speaker for today into your hands, O oh Lord. May you speak through the speaker in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you. And for now, we say goodbye.